the whole idea behind fair share is, is to give everybody a fair share of the total pie. And the reason why everybody wants to aggregate all their resources together like this, like mm -hmm. it's kind of obvious, everybody wants to be able to save money by just aggregating all of their consumption in one place where they can get the best deals out of AWS. That's right. Uh, there's there's saving money. Uh, uh, aggregating resources also allows you a little le a bit less overhead in terms of allocating those resources across the group in a um, sort of directed manner, right? So yeah. previous to fair share scheduling, our job queues were essentially first in, first out. Uh, and if you wanted to share resources across those groups, what you needed to do was allocate different queues to each one of those groups with an underlying compute environment, or you needed to segregate the compute environment, your total amount of resources and split it up between those groups. They might have to manually, you know, move the allocation of compute from other groups into this one and then move it back. So um, for fair share scheduling policies, they have these parameters, which we go into the uh, blog post, you know, in addition to the, uh, the share identifier, like who you are, there, there are other things that might modify how much of that underlying resource you get allocated. Uh, one of them is weight factor. One of them is like a, a, a how long of a period should you consider uh, for um, allocating resources, the history of jobs, like, you know, and then a, a compute reservation. So share decay in seconds represents the time window that you're assessing for how much somebody has used. Right, so, uh, so share decay in seconds is, is like, over what window do we consider, do we care correct. about fairness? That's right, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at, um, so within this blog post, we don't only sort of describe the theory of what these parameters would do, we also ran practical examples with the policies that we show you right. and graph out the results. Visually. Well, that was actually the most interesting thing was those graphs. Right. So when you actually, when you walk up to a batch that's running fair share scheduling, you've got this share identifier. And that, that honestly is the thing that identifies that could be like your department ID or your user ID. It's the thing that actually, that, that identifies your, mm. your share, the thing that needs some fairness. That's correct. So customers use that shared identifier in different ways. Certain customers do it by organizational level, right? They'll map some resources to human resources or their uh, machine learning operations group or their dev and test environment and tag, uh, essentially tag the jobs coming into that with that share identifier. We've also seen customers do it by workload. Uh, basically that share ID is, is what you determine are your business needs to be able to allocate across the uh, yeah. across a compute fleet how do we determine what to give you in the future is based on the fair share policy that says if you have a lot of recent usage we're going to deprioritize your jobs for other shares that might not have had as much usage as you so that we can allocate those resources and balance them across the shares over time it's not going to be a, an immediate allocation but it will balance itself over time uh, so we go through the blog post and explain it. We give this very simple fair share policy, which has two share identifiers, yellow and blue. Mm -hmm. uh, and because, you know, we just have the two here, uh, what BAT should do in this case is allocate over time 50% of the resources to yellow and 50% of the resources to blue, right? So that's our share, fair share policy example. And then when we actually went to run the experiment, we did a, um, a submission of yellow jobs, a bunch of them waited a bit and then, and then, uh, and then submitted the blue jobs just to, to see what would happen to the, um, um, you know, the allocation of resources. If you had, you know, only one active share identifier versus two, right? And in fact, in the, you know, in the, in the vanilla state without any sort of fair share going on, mm -hmm. What would have the happened? Team got there first should have should just ended up like dominating everything, right? Exactly. So what would have happened in the absence of fair share? Since we submitted yellow jobs, all of those jobs would be queued up before blue, right? All yellow jobs would be completed uh, before blue jobs uh, even even started. Got to look in. Let's take a look at the the graph, right? We ran the experiment. This is you know sort of short, um, uh, about five minute jobs is a variable uh, timing. Here's when we submitted. This yellow dotted line represents the number of queued uh, jobs uh, that are up for a share, right? So we immediately see that we, we have this many jobs. We submitted 450 of them. 
um, and then it get, they get allocated resources, which you see right here. This red line represents our, our max vCPU capacity. So that's the compute environment, right? So that's how many jobs we could, uh, like, you know, how many slots we have to fit jobs into. And you can see, as expected, uh, yellow dominates the entire fleet, yep. right? And then as soon as we submitted blue jobs, um, uh, you know, you see them in the queue, enter the queue, they stay queued for just a little bit until resources become free. And then they start getting scheduled onto the cluster as yellow jobs complete. Since they've had a higher aggregate usage, we start preferring uh, blue jobs over time and then deallocating the resources to yellow. And then at this point right here is where those two aggregate usage things catch up to each other and you're seeing a balance, right? And then you're getting, since these are still running, uh, they get higher and higher aggregate usage, you prioritize yellow keeps growing up and down. And you see the sinusoidal wave, which is exactly what you would expect, right? This Already, this is a massive improvement over FIFO. Even if you really didn't need to go and adjust any of the parameters for fair share, just doing it this way and disabling FIFO and going for fair share is already going to give you sort of a more mm, reasonable approach for latecomers to be able to get jobs run. They're not going to be waiting in the queue eternally for the for the people in front of them to finish. Mm -hmm. The previous policy showed a equal balance between shares. Sometimes that's just not the case, right? If you've defined a share going to your human resources department uh, versus your ML operations, it's likely that the um, the things coming from uh, HR are important uh, and they need to get done but you might not want to allocate equal shares across these two groups. You might want to uh, prefer jobs from the ML ops because that's a uh, closer to the line of business, right? Yep. In order to have different allocations of resources for those two groups, you use this weight factor parameter. And this is um, a little bit hard to explain because um, the default for a weight factor, each share in our default policy, it actually gets 1.0. It basically means don't change the value of the computed aggregate usage for a share. Less than one means that I'm going to multiply the aggregate usage uh, VCPU seconds in time by this number. So that the final thing that the 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 final number that the AWS batch scheduler considers for job placement uh, is going to be modified by that weight factor. Team blue with a weight factor less than one, it basically means that team blue's consumption counts for less against their sort of notional quota. So that actually means they end up being able to be more greedy and get more resource, right? That's correct. So just you just think of weight factor as, as for instance, Earth's standard gravity, right? When you're on the moon, you can jump higher with less less amount of resources. Yeah. So same experiment, right? We submitted 450 yellow jobs. We waited a few minutes and then we submitted blue. Uh, and we have here again in our policy, a weight factor of 0.5. So blue's aggregate usage should look half of what it is. So therefore, uh, you should see blue consuming twice as many resources or getting allocated twice as many resources yellow once it starts coming in, right? Yeah. And that's exactly what we see, right? We still see that yellow does get aggregate, you know, their aggregate uses does drop enough over time that it starts getting allocated resources over blue, but then blue itself keeps, you know, sort of these, these wider peaks. You can see it in the, the really rapid descent of, right. the, of the pending job. Uh, now you had a question about like, what if you wanted, you know, some, you know, some, some resources that will always be available for a new share coming in. Um, for instance, if you have folks on the, on the East coast versus the West coast, and you don't want the West coast uh, folks to have to wait for, you know, whatever amount of time when they start submitting jobs because the entire compute capacity has been taken up by your East Coast uh, uh, developers or, or data scientists, right? Uh, for that, you use this uh, thing called a compute reservation. Uh, this is an integer value of this, you know, sort of uh, the fraction, uh, the integer denominator of this fraction to the power of the active share IDs back to balanced yellow and blue. And we have a compute reservation of 50. Uh, you have 50 over 100, to the power of the active shares. So if only one share is active, then you should see this, right? That 50% of your resources, and this is a contrived example, right? You right. don't want to reserve 50% of your resources. That's <laughs> <so> <laughs> that'd be a really lousy idea. Absolutely crazy. 
uh, you see that the reserved capacity, like you're not using your maximal capacity for all the jobs that are there. So once you have two, uh, you'll see that uh, they get balanced, right? So you start balancing out uh, red, blue, red, blue, like we saw in that first example, and but you're only still allocating. Got some reserve capacity you still got some reserve capacity for new shares coming in. This is a quick note, right? So we saw that our share policies identified blue and yellow. What happens if you start submitting a red job? Uh, uh, something with a share identifier into a job queue where you haven't predefined that share identifier. It still works. Uh, what happens is that um, uh, uh, the scheduler sees this, you know, not specified uh, share and allocates it a weight factor of one and mixes it into into the into the mix, right? So it just treats it as a share that has a weight factor of one. We want to show you that the theory actually matches our expectations. We have three lines for compute capacity here, right? And same that, that same policy that we had, uh, same experiment. We have the maximal compute capacity, the 75% compute capacity, and the 50% compute capacity, right? right? So when we have, based on our model, when we only have one active share ID here, right, the yellow, we should have only 50% of our fleet taken up, and boom, there it is right there, right? As soon as we have two active share IDs, we should see 75% of the fleet being taken up. And that's exactly what we see while we have everything going on. Uh, and then, you know, so on and so forth. But convince me, convince me this is good because what I see here is that I've got 25% of my available capacity is just not getting used. Right. A contrived example. It's, it's basically a, a, to address service level agreements for, you know, what you need for all groups. Like, so you might have an SLA that says we will start your jobs within X number of minutes, no matter what, uh, you know, there, it's, it's essentially a way uh, to make sure that you have some, uh, some capacity there available for new shares so they can start immediately. A red share identifier is going to be able to get capacity literally right away. Literally right away. Literally, yeah. And, and then of course, over time, mm -hmm. red becomes just one of the shares that gets a fair share allocation. Right. It's going to get over time, presumably about a third of the capacity. That's correct. And this fair share po a policy, it will, you know, so you see here in contrast to other, other times, blue gets allocated resources straight away, right? Before we saw this like lag period before blue. If red starts coming in here, we should see the total capacity go up to something like, you know, 85%, I haven't done the actual math, or, or, or 90% utilization. Uh, and we'll see red have a smaller share growing over time. And then you'll see yet red, yellow, and blue sort of bouncing. Using fair share as your scheduling policy is, is actually kind of a no-brainer if you've got multiple users on the cluster. If you're enjoying these videos, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that we can keep making more to help you understand how the cloud works and to show you new ways to help all the scientists and engineers around you who use HPC every day to do amazing things. It's what gets us motivated as well. See you next time.